Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Magazine Part 2. On this October 23rd, 2019, you have James J. Mayloff in for Carl Hilke today. And I am joined by uh, some great people in our area. We have from ODC today, Stephanie, Tanya, and Chris. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies. Appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having us. I'll let you uh, each introduce yourselves first, and then we will uh, get right into things. But uh, if we can go down the line here and let you introduce yourselves. Sure. I'm Tanya Callahan. I'm the Mental Health Director at ODC. And Stephanie Hartman. I'm Donor Relations and Communications. And I'm Chris Hanton. I'm the Mental Health Professional Supervisor at ODC. You guys uh, appreciate you all for the time. I know how busy it can be over there, and especially this time of year. Um, so what I'd like to do uh, right off the bat is is kind of get into uh, things with you, Steph, um, mm -hmm. uh, about uh, why you brought these uh, two uh, wonderful ladies in with us and, and what we're kind of addressing today with the ODC. Sure. As we've talked about in the past, um, ODC really strives to meet need. And um, in 2018, ODC began providing mental health services based on um, the counties that ODC serves, that they were searching for providers um, to serve a waiting list of consumers. So um, again, ODC saw a need and took that on and decided to start mental health. And I believe Tanya was the first employee. Um, so Tanya is the mental health director and then um, things have really expanded from there. Hmm. Now, Tanya, uh, we'll, we'll start with you here a little bit. If you don't mind giving us a little bit of uh, background on yourself and, and what got you interested in doing this as a profession and, and involved with the ODC. Sure. Um, my background, I actually um, graduated from UW Stout. So my background is more in um, counseling and evaluation. And my I have worked within the private sector, um, within the nonprofit sector, and um, with the county systems. Okay. All right. It's very impressive. Uh, I'm sorry. It just is. That's impressive. That's some great work. So uh, what uh, what is it that uh, in your aspect, uh, where are you coming from uh, with the ODC? How do you kind of uh, incorporate that with them? Um, our hope, um, and that's what I really want to strive, is that we provide hope to individuals. Um, we work with adults, adolescents, and children through their recovery process of um, helping them within their mental health and um, helping them support them in their community with whatever they're working on so that they're successful and can live the most independent lives that they can. It's so, um, it's, there's a big reason why you guys are one of my favorite organizations to come in and talk to you because I think that empowering people is something that we need to do more of in society. And you're dealing with a group of people that need that maybe more than anybody else. Um, and and in, a, in a time and age where uh, it, there are outcries over all kinds of things and, and there is uh, so many different movements that are going on and stuff that are all important, I would like to see a little more attention to this specific group. And, and I think that it's part of society that we need to pay more attention to. And to hear it on the mental health, health aspect is, is really encouraging because I, I got to say, um, and it, it kind of started on in an interesting way with uh, talking with Sheriff Becker about mental health and about how important that is with what he does and how, it, you know, he doesn't want this revolving door of people, you know, coming in and out and everything. Uh, it, it, it's not so much that the crime they committed, why did they commit it? And, and, and what is a part of their brain that made that happen and those sorts of things. More and more we're seeing people address mental health and it's, it, it is such a... Um, a wonderful thing to see because it's something that's been an issue as long as we've been alive and it just hasn't wasn't addressed especially when we were kids this wasn't something that people talked about as openly as we do now and we have so many different organizations addressing it so it, it is it is a, a key part of not only empowering uh these people to to feel more comfortable in our in community and, and in these jobs but uh how they're doing during the job how they're doing during the process how they're doing outside work all these things are, are key to it too so for for um for you uh when it comes to how have you found doing this like incorporating that with uh, with what you do how is it going uh because you just started doing this a little while ago as i understand or? we started um in december of 2018. it was okay so everybody yes. so how has it been in Spitzer? how has that gone um, it's, well, we continue to receive referrals from all of our county uh, resources. It's really a collaborative effort amongst, you know, the police and their training and what they're receiving and us as our background within our mental health. And then with our county supports, it is really a collaborative effort to provide the best supports we can to the individuals. And it's all individualized. So it depends on what their needs are when they're coming in. And we try to build 
whatever that recovery plan looks like around what those needs might be. And uh, when it comes to a subject like this too, it, you, you hit on a good point there that every person is different. Every person is going to have different needs or different uh, things that they need to be, have addressed. So it has to make it a little more difficult about that. Um, it, so having more resources, it, it certainly must help with that, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, impressive. Uh, now, Chris, uh, same kind of question for you. Uh, what, what your background, a little bit of your background and, and what got you involved in this and in this field even. So I'm a, Tanya and I are kind of like two spokes. Um, we're, we're kind of opposite. We have the same philosophy though about hope and hope is our kind of our overreaching goal. Mm -hmm. um, but my training is as a social worker. I have a master's from UWGB and I'm a clinical social worker in the state of Wisconsin. Um, my passion has been children and families. So she has kind of the both in the adult world and I'm the children and families world. So we can kind of make that bridge for no matter who comes in our door. I am really feel passionately about Wisconsin has a really high suicide rate. Wisconsin has a very high um, kind of prison pipeline rate of people who have mental health issues that have been in jail and prison, like you speak with Sheriff Becker. We need to stop that. That's yeah. that's really, people don't commit crimes because they're mentally ill. That connection isn't there, but sometimes yeah. we're treating people as if they need to be put in prisons when they just need help in the community. It's interesting and, and, and also very impressive uh, statistics uh, or, or background of you. Your, your resume is really impressive too. I'm immediately thinking about uh, how, how little I did with my college career. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what, what I want to uh, touch on there, because it's a serious subject, so I try to light things up a little bit, but I, I do want to uh, address that, that comment that you made there because it is a really key part of this thing. And, and so uh, important too with what uh, you were saying as well is that uh, we, there are so many different layers to this and it's not a black and white situation. There's a lot of gray area to this, whether we're talking about adults, children, um, whatever the case. So we need as many different, like different points of view and different perspectives on this as we can have. Um, and it's, it's one of those things that we're never, we would like to get to a point where it is not as much of an issue. We're not going to get to that point unless we tick at it. Uh, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It takes work. Um, you guys know that better than I do. But it, with with so many people coming together on this in so many different facets, like we, we've mentioned the sheriff's department, mm -hmm. there's other organizations coming in. Do, do you feel like compared to a year ago to now, do you feel better about the, the overall, like when you look at this as a, in the whole, like kind of a taking a step back and looking at it, do you feel better about the way we're addressing this? I think we're kind of scratching the surface still, especially yeah. as a state. But I mean, the CCS program, the, the Comprehensive Community Services Program that is through the county funding system, it really is a recovery base that the client consumer themselves decide what their goals are. So we're supports and meeting them where they're at. Because there's lots of people in the community who aren't in the criminal system, that aren't in hospitals, that, that are productive citizens who just need extra supports to make it to a better level of functioning. So I think people kind of see the news and they think, oh, everybody who has a mental health issue is you know, in prison or they're you know shooting yeah. up schools or those sorts of things. And that's not true. There's lots of productive people in our society who just need supports. Just like you go to cancer treatment, if you have cancer, it's the same thing. And we need to start recognizing that. And I think we are as a community, but we need to move forward even more. Well said. Uh, very well said. And, and, and I agree. And I, going off of that, I, with the, when we take care of our physical health, I think we need to take care of our mental health. And I think that's part of just uh, scratching the surface of that's becoming more pronounced now, that we do need to start taking care of our mental health. And it's becoming... Um, I think people are recognizing that in our communities. Yeah, I, I, again, very well said and a, and a really good point. We uh, have, it, it is in our human nature that we see somebody with a broken arm and a cast and we immediately, oh, how are you? How'd that happen? Everything. And and we have a, a, you know, a chemical imbalance in our brain or something like that that is just as out of our hands as a broken arm. And we don't have the same sympathy or the same empathy for that. It is getting better. It has come a long way. I can I can definitely speak to that. But it has got some work to do. And, and, and part of why, you know, it's great to have uh, you, you ladies on with us and, and talking with you about this is spreading that word. It's just kind of getting that out there. Mm -hmm. Another key part of this, I think, too, is having aspects of society, people in society, people in our, our uh, leadership angle, you know, positions and that speaking on this subject that may not have always in the past. Um, I've talked again, and his ears are burning right now, but I, I've talked with uh, Sheriff Becker about this off air a lot where previous regime and that maybe not didn't address this as much as his has and and how important it is to him and his officers and his people to address this situation 
Um, we need more of that. We need more people that, you know, years past or when we were kids, we wouldn't think of a sheriff talking about this subject, where the first time I met him months ago, it was one of the first things we dived into. Um, that change, that change in, in attack and a change in process really needs to take hold all over the place. We need more of that, more people kind of having an understanding that um, just because we don't see that broken arm uh, doesn't mean that that person's not hurting, that they're not dealing with something. And at the same time, um, and I'll, I'll speak about this as uh, for myself too, um, and coming from my background, and I've got, you know, have some in my own past, in my own history and family, um, it, being able to be open that you do need a hand, that you do uh, this kind of, you know, I, I was still raised by the generation of the strong, quiet Gary Cooper type and everything that you, you're suffering, keep it inside. You know, every, you're a man, you handle it and you keep going forward. And that really needs to kind of, we, we need to do, it's one thing to be in, you know, not complain all five seconds and, and you don't uh, just uh, make a, a mole out of mountain or anything like that. But it's also important to understand that when you do need a hand, that it's okay to ask for that hand, that there's nothing wrong with it. There's not a person that has ever existed on this earth that didn't need a hand at some point. So it's okay. It's all right. And, and I think um, one of the things that's good about having you guys in talking about this is doing that. Is hopefully there's people out there that maybe haven't reached out before will reach out now. How could they do that if they need to? Well, I think there's a variety of ways that you can reach out. Yeah, it's that. a big question. I'm sorry. It, it, is, <laughs> it is a very broad question. I, I've meant more specifically, I guess, people with involved in ODC, if they haven't been able to and, and how they can. You know, that's, that's more of where I'm going with it, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of resources out there that mm. people can reach out. There's text lines. There's, um, there's a crisis line in our local area. I think family and friends, I think there's some resources there that people can reach out to. But I also think if you're looking for um, other resources, you could start with your doctor. I mean, there's th those places for the individuals out listening to what we're talking about. If you're looking for like ODC services and those types of supports, um, right now, uh, most of our, all of our funding is coming through our county support system, through our comprehensive community services. We work very closely with all of our county services and um, the social workers and the service facilitators that work within that programming. Um, all of our referrals right now are coming through that. We are looking into the future of um, pursuing um, through some state service delivery systems, um, some different funding streams. So we'll be moving forward with getting um, connected to those. So then we'll be able to help support some individuals outside of that particular funding stream. Thank you. I appreciate you answering that. You didn't have to. I, I appreciate you answering that <laughs> Hopefully question. Hopefully I though. answered it. I think, I think you did a great job, especially, especially since it wasn't really in your wheelhouse. I, I it's one of those questions, but it's uh, that when I was talking beforehand about the organic questioning, that's kind of what I meant. It, you know, it's just one of those things where it, uh, it, it's such a big topic, and it's one that when I have people who really know what they're talking about in with us, I, I want to ask, I want to pick your brain a little bit and kind of hear where you're coming from or, or ideas that you have and stuff, and I appreciate that. Uh, we, again, are speaking with Stephanie Hartman, Tanya Callahan, and Chris Hanton from the ODC. We will be taking a very quick break. When we come back, we'll have more with them on Morning Magazine, AM 1320. This is WFHR. Where we have our final segment of Morning Magazine, and we are joined by Stephanie Hartman, Ta Tanya Callahan, Chris Hanton from ODC. Thank you so much again, ladies, for being in with us today. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to touch on really quick before we uh, get too far ahead is uh, the Milkweed Market and Ink Spot. I want to know how they're doing, how things are going mm -hmm. over there with that. Everything is going great. Um, Ink Splash and Milkweed Market um, are ramping up for the holiday season. We have our uh, Christmas sneak peek on November 1st and 2nd at Milkweed Market. So that will be an awesome time for people to come in and just sort of see some of the new things we have for Christmas. And I was back on the production floor the other day and I can tell you there's some amazing things. So um, make sure you stop in. So our hours on Fridays are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then another thing for the calendar is Thursday, November 14th is the Holiday Sip and Shop. So another opportunity for folks to come in and um, check out the holiday decor, and that'll be from 4 to 7 p.m. So, You're Both great events. Yes. Uh, yes. And there are so many wonderful things uh, at the Milkweed Market, like especially when it, we're getting closer to Christmas here and everything, and uh, we, it's something to think about. Um, th Absolutely. There are already great things over there. There are, and we will be participating in uh, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday. Um, so keep us in mind as you're doing all your... Um, 
shopping at the end of November. And I think, yeah, we will. We'll have you guys in before then, so we can really hit yes. that then uh, really hard. But I, I appreciate you mentioning it, too. And uh, things going well with Ink Splash? Uh, they the- are. Um, they were busy with um, the River Kings apparel. Oh, that's right. So they have wrapped that up, I believe, because the season has started. Um, but lots of custom orders as well. So I guess just for people to know, they can do one shirt or they can do a thousand and they do other promotional products as well so if you need your logo to get out there meet with ink splash and they'll find a way to help you out i know that uh we have are in sore need of uh, a new apparel here at wfhr so yes. that's the first thing i thought of uh, was there um and it's one of those things where anybody out there who is in need of those sorts of things uh, that's the place to go uh, that's that, right. i mean take it there not only and i'm not just saying that because of the the great people and the type of organization that's running it it's a really good product it, it, it is. really well done products and that and milkweed are both incredibly uh, top notch i'd put them up against anything uh, really well uh, created things. And a lot of people think that like you have to be a business for some reason in order to have apparel. You can come in and have a shirt made for a family gathering, or if you just have something that you want on a shirt, you can come in and do that. Uh, yeah, and I could speak to that because I, I wanted to get a shirt. Uh, the Simpsons are the, is the greatest show of all time. I wanted to get that <laughs> shirt, and, and, and they were gonna, they would even make it for yeah, me. They, they were nice enough to even do that. So yeah. I thought that was really great of them. Really good people over there. And you can come in with just an idea. You don't have to have a design. Um, we have folks on staff that will design things. Really good people too. Yes. And and, and that just I, I cannot stress it enough that when you purchase things through either of these or uh, companies, you are not only getting really good products, but you are supporting people uh that make those products and you're putting money right back into the community That's and, right. and right back into things it's a, it's a, a perfect circle right yes. there with all that. of the dollars support our mission and uh, when it comes to uh, that mission and, and how we can kind of support that as community members certainly buying products purchasing things there is is, is key and that's mm-hmm. a big part of it but is there anything else is it like volunteering or different things that we can do in that as- aspect there is a capacity for volunteers um, what we also are a lot of times now is we have um, participants who want to volunteer out in the community mm-hmm. and who need work experience. So partnering with businesses is huge for us. And if you happen to be a business who's not currently working with ODC, um, give our front desk a call and we will match you up and find out what kind of opportunities you have. And then we have participants that we could place. Yeah, and, uh, and and Steph, I think one of the, the key things to that, too, that when we're talking about that, especially uh, I'm just speaking to businesses that may not have been taking advantage of this yet, mm-hmm. is is them understanding that you are getting people that really are hungry to work. Yes, you know, absolutely. Uh, there's not an employer out there right now that doesn't want uh, an employee that wants to come to work, that is hungry to come to work. And these the, these cats, they, they do. They want to yes. work. They're very... They take a lot of pride in their work. Um, and you don't have to just jump from i think i might want to do this to okay i'm employing someone it can be temporary work experience um all experiences are good so it, it's just kind of trying things out and seeing where the fit is that's a really good point too that, that there is a lot of uh you know wiggle room here uh yes. they'll work you'll work with an employer and and what works best for them and and, and finding that right fit because yep. it's not uh again another thing that odc has done in your whole existence and i think has been a beautiful thing about this is it's not just oh we just want to throw somebody into work we just want to throw somebody yes. somewhere it, it's finding the right fit for the right person the right job for the right person making sure people are confident and comfortable in what they're doing on both sides the employer and the employee absolutely and and the support from odc is ongoing even if you do you know hire someone um odc is always there as a support system to kind of guide Um, but yes we're meeting the participants where they're at finding out their interests and then working with businesses um, to match that up we have about three or four minutes left. Um, uh, so real quick, uh, I wanted to ask Steph if there was anything we didn't get a chance to address that we wanted to. Do you ladies have anything you want to Well, mention? I was going to ask them individually. <laughs> uh, but, but, but no, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, it, 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 I'm telling you, one of these days, uh, Steph, I'm just going to push the buttons okay. and, and you're going to host I'll just this come segment. in and do the show. I think you do All a great right. job. That I think sounds you really great. Would. Uh, but but to, to, to piggyback off of what you just said there, um, I did want to give you both an opportunity to kind of speak to uh, not only with the ODC, but to mental health in general. And if there was anything you guys wanted to say or address that we didn't get a chance to. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll start with you, Chris, if you don't mind. 
So I think for me, I think it's that piece that you brought up about it's a whole community. ODC, we have a presence here. We are growing. We are really excited to be part of that. But it is everybody. It's from the churches. It's from the schools. It's from families. We have to stand together if we're going to make forward progress on this. So hopefully we can continue to do as a community. Very true. Very true. And uh, uh, Tanya, was there anything we wanted that you could maybe uh, touch on or that you wanted to add to? I, I'm, I'm Chris wrapped it up very nicely, but I do want to say that our staff that are working out in the community, they're out in the community all day and they're all master's level clinicians that are out working with individuals. They go, they basically go from one person to another person and help support them in the different needs that, that they're wanting and um, the support that's kind of provided to them from both Chris mm -hmm. and myself um, is from more of that licensing standpoint. It's really those guys are doing the hard work and um, working with individuals and connecting and they all deserve a kudos for being out there and um, just supporting them. The the best that we can and, uh, and and well said by both of you is there um and i'll ask all three of you this question here and uh, chime in if you if you feel like you have an answer but is there things that we can do as a, in a community to be some more supportive or to be more open-minded about this is it uh kind of doing our own research looking into these subjects uh, as we can uh doing our own homework about that um uh, reaching out to you volunteering there are different things that we can do that uh, are isn't being done necessarily Maybe even just uh, the the aspect of that of just even doing your own doing a little more homework and understanding mental health a little bit better on your own um, it, it, it can go a long way. I would say. I think for me, the one thing people could do is with the education piece is looking a little bit into just one topic that they're interested in, but also leaving the judgments behind. So if you see somebody acting a little bit differently, instead of using um, like negative terms, just say like, are you okay? And just reaching out to one person. If everybody reached out to one person, it would be a much better place. It's um, it's something that I, I, I speak about a lot in acknowledging another human being. Uh, I dealt with this a lot growing up. Uh, as a kid in the city, you, you see a lot of homeless people and it being poor yourself, you don't have change to give them or anything. So one of the things that I learned early on was just making eye contact, just saying hi, just asking how you're doing. And, and sure enough, the more and more that happened, the more comfortable I became and realized, oh, that's right, they're just another human being just like me. They just want to be treated like another human being. We so often in life, and especially we don't deal with the, the homeless situation as much around here, but uh, I saw it all the time where people would, they maybe they'd throw $5 in there, but they wouldn't look at the person. They just throw the money in there. And just acknowledging another human being that is suffering, that is struggling right now, goes a light year for that person. Just treating them like you would want to be treated. It's not really that difficult, but it is a part of it. I think just listening and being present, you don't have to go in and fix a situation, but sometimes just being present and sitting with somebody will go so far. And recognizing that you can just walk the path with somebody is, is really helpful. Uh, very well said, yeah. And, and that goes a long way. It's not always about, you know, you listen to a person and they're asking you to solve something or anything. Sometimes it's just listening. Sometimes it's just being there. And, that, and that, that goes a, that's a big thing in life in general, mm -hmm. I, I would think. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, it doing that for each other as human beings. Even if a person isn't so much struggling, they're just having a bad day. Kind of just being there, being an ear to listen and not necessarily, you know, coming up with the world's perfect solution or having the right thing to say or whatever. We kind of overhype that sometimes. Sometimes it's just about sitting back and listening. And it's been a great time sitting back and listening to you three. I, I cannot thank you both, all three of you, for coming in enough. Uh, thank you so much for everything, not only uh, the time that you spent with us here, but what you do for our community. I uh, appreciate you very much. Thank you for having us. And thanks for having And we'll talk again real soon. Uh, and again, a big thank you to Stephanie Hartman, Tanya Callahan, and Chris Hatton for coming in from the ODC. And look forward to uh, speaking with all of you again you real soon. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And be sure to join us tomorrow for more Morning Magazine. We'll uh, get, kicked off, uh, get kicked, things kicked off at 10.06 tomorrow. And I want to say then uh, and a big thank you to our friends at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media and Joe doing the great work that you guys do. We'll be back with more tomorrow on Morning Magazine. This is AM 1320. You are listening to WFHR.